Hey guys, I'm Mr. DBear, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own custom transition scenes for YouTube and Twitch. Now, two things you're going to need are Adobe After Effects and GIMP. GIMP is free, Adobe After Effects is like $20 a month, but you can get away using the seven day free trial uh, to get a little stuff done. Now, when we get into the video, you'll see the transition scene that I'm going to show you guys how to make. So we'll see that in a second. So I make most of the things for my stream myself from emotes to sub alerts, follow alerts, all the stuff. So if you have any questions, stop by the Twitch stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Come by and ask any questions if you have them. And let's show you guys how to make this transition. So we're gonna start by making a new file in GIMP. We have our standard 1920 by 1080, but what we are going to do is make it about 80 pixels larger in each direction. And that's just to give us a little more wiggle room when we're cutting things up and putting it into Adobe After Effects so we don't have any weird white lines on the edges or weird white lines in the middle. Now we're gonna change the X resolution and the Y resolution to 300 pixels per square inch to give us a little bit more detail. And now that we've done that, we're going to make a new layer and we're gonna make sure we have it highlighted, grab our paint bucket, and give us a nice base blue color, grab our paintbrush, get that size up and get some alternate colors on our canvas that we want to use. Now we're gonna grab that smudge tool and we're gonna smudge it all together, mix all the paint up real nice like. Then after we've got a good mixing, we'll start from the top left and kind of just do diagonal strokes to make it all blend in really evenly. You can even make the paintbrush a little smaller to get rid of some of the more pixelated areas if you do see those and drag out any other colors you want. Now we're gonna grab the free select tool, the little lasso there, because we're about to cut up the image into different parts. Another thing you can do here is you go to image and guides, new guide by, by percent, and you can make vertical and horizontal lines through the exact center of your image just to help you line things up a little better. I like to use it. You can if you want, you don't have to. So now we're gonna shift plus button to zoom in. The minus button is to zoom out. And we're gonna start at the corners and make a nice little triangle here. And you can use the middle mouse button to kind of drag yourself across the image. Now that we've done that, we're gonna control C to copy that and then control X to cut it out then control V to paste and we're gonna right click that new floating layer and put it as a new layer and if you see that little white line through the center that's why we've made this a little bit bigger pixel wise in either direction because once we take it into Adobe After Effects we'll be able to mush those images together to get rid of that white line and make it look nice and clean so now what we're gonna do is export each shape individually with these eyeballs you can make things disappear reappear so we're gonna make that first shape, the only visible image, and we're going to export it as bottom right. Sure. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the top left image. Now make sure you are saving this actual file in GIMP and somewhere you can find it because you may want to go back and change things later, right? You wanna keep all these layers saved somewhere so that you can use them. Now we're gonna go into Adobe After Effects, make a new composition. You'll see it's 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 frames per second. Sure, that's fine. Now, we're gonna set the resolution in Adobe After Effects to half so that there's less pixels for it to render as we're working with. It just makes the workflow go a little bit faster and a little bit less laggy. Now we'll drag and drop our images that we want to use into the project like so very very easy and now we can drag the images into the composition itself into the work area now what we're going to do is we're going to move this off the screen so you can left click shift drag and it'll drag it in a straight line and you'll see those drop down arrows on the side on the bottom right image so we're going to drop down those arrows and we're going to mark the position and that's going to mark a timestamp on the timeline for it to be where you put it at that time. Now we're going to move our little scrubber there to the time where we want it to be fully on the screen and then we're gonna drag it up 
so that it is there and you'll see we drag it back push space bar which is play and boom it moves now we can drag that second portion to make it appear on the screen sooner or later however we want now, getting used to how these timestamps work is a little confusing at first, so it's gonna take some time to play with it and get used to it. But we're gonna do the same thing for the top left, drop down these menus, and we're gonna drag it off the screen so that it is not visible at the start. You can use the middle mouse wheel to drag yourself around, just like in GIMP, if you need to move around the image without actually grabbing anything. We're gonna mark that position and we're going to scrub through so that we can decide when we want our second image to start moving. So then we're going to make another timestamp because we don't want the two images to start moving at the same time. So making this second timestamp is going to make it stay still for that first portion. And then from the second timestamp, when we move it onto the screen, from the second timestamp is when it will start moving. Now we can see why we made the image a little bit larger in GIMP so that we can get rid of that white line. We can kind of mash everything together so it looks nice and fluid. And we have a little bit of excess around our animation because it's 80 pixels larger. You can see the white line constitutes the entire image. So we have a little bit of extra room there. So now we're gonna start moving everything off and we're gonna make new timestamps to start moving the image off because we want these two images to be on the animation hang for a second so that your scene will swap while they are on the screen and then they move off to reveal your new scene it's going to take some playing around with but you know where the buttons are i've showed you so you have to just play around with them and kind of get used to what works for you and how to do it so we've made the new timestamps to make that one go off the screen and now we're going to do the bottom right triangle as well and we're going to scrub through and work out the timing because we want them to be staggered of how they move off just for artistic reasons so we're going to make a new timestamp for the bottom right triangle and then we'll make another one from whence we want it to start moving off the screen and then we will drag and drop it to the position we want it to be in and you got these cool little lines that kind of show you exactly where it will be moving to so you can make everything look nice and flush and as you can see, we got them moving on and we've got them moving off. Easy peasy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this little blue bar, our work area in, and we're going to drag it to just after where we want the actual animation to end. Uh, if you don't move that, you'll end up exporting a 30 second image or animation that you, you don't want that. So you need, you need to drag the work area over to constitute the whole animation. Now we're gonna add the logo in. Drag and drop the logo just as before into the project. Now we're gonna drag and drop the logo into the composition, into the work area. And we're gonna make it above the other two images so it shows in the forefront. I'm gonna use these drop down arrows. And now instead of position, we're gonna use opacity. So at the very beginning of the animation, we want the opacity to be 0%, and we are going to click the little watch there and make a timestamp. Now we're going to scrub through, and we're going to decide when we want to start being opaque in the image. So we're going to make another timestamp where we want it to start appearing, and then we're going to choose where we want it to be fully appeared, change the opacity to 100%, and boom. There we go. Now we're going to move it off. So we want it to be opaque for a certain time. And then we're going to make the second timestamp for it to start moving off. And now we're going to choose, we want it to be completely disappeared at this point. So grab the opacity, set it to zero and it comes on and it goes off. And there you have your clean, clean, easy transition. Now we're going to export it using Adobe Media Encoder. You don't have to do this. You can add it to the regular render queue. I use Adobe Media Encoder because I often use WebM files because they're smaller and they go in stream elements. You can use H.264 here, which you can use in your regular video editing software or in OBS. Now the important part is we go to this custom button where you wanna change the settings. So you're in video, you can see it's 1920 by 1080, easy peasy, lemon squeeze. And the important part is we scroll down and we check this include alpha channel. You have 
to include that. It's very, very important for it being a scene transition. Or when you try to put it in, it's just going to have a black image and then your animation is going to happen and it's not going to do much for you. Change where you want it to be saved at through the clicking the output file and then render away. So now that we've rendered it, we're going to set it up in OBS. So add to scene transitions and we're going to add a stinger. Name it. Click your file, find it, add it there. And we're going to preview the transition and you can see the A turns to the B before the animation happens. So the timing is off, right? We have to set a transition point using milliseconds. So we're going to use a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. And then after that, we're going to click the preview transition button and you'll see A, you see before the animation happens. And then once the animation happens, you see B in the background, showing you that the timing is correct. So you'll have to play with this for however long you made your animation or not. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to streaming and new to YouTube, I hope this gets you started if you want to do things yourself. Uh, now consider liking the video if you got something out of it and subscribing because we're going to be coming out with more videos, more tutorials on how to start making your own emotes or camera borders or even your logo. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time.